Apart from contested pretenses torrenting the Fourth Estate, Snowden's criminal revelations shouldn't come as a surprise in context of post-9-11 policies such as the Patriot Act. In mid-June, 30-year-old Edward Snowden, then NSA contractor employed at Booz Allen Hamilton, leaked publications on NSA data mining programs to the UK's Guardian newspaper. Labeled PRISM, these NSA cloak-and-dagger activities were, and still are, designed to harbor and surveil American digital communications in real time. Subsequent to verbal onslaught by American officials, Snowden fled the states for Hong Kong to evade U.S. prosecution. Then bullied by a 1996 extradition treaty between the U.S. and Hong Kong, Russian diplomats from within the Kremlin assaged Snowden by vowing him political asylum. Presently en route to an unnamed nation, reportedly Iceland, Ecuador, or Cuba via Moscow, Snowden is under fire by the American government for nothing more than violating a non-disclosure agreement and giving credence to federal liability. You can kill the messenger, but you can't kill the message. Nevertheless, let's dissect the liberal and dictatorial synthesis of which the mainstream media incessantly peddles to the public. Snowden is a quote, traitor, but if you see something, say something. Snowden is a hero, a willing martyr for truth and justice for disclosing illegitimate government operations despite deserting his six-figure annual paycheck, girlfriend, and comfortable residence in Hawaii. Beneath the rhetoric, Obama, consenter to the assassination of guiltless children and recipient of Nobel Peace Prize and Man of the Year awards, is the true traitor, and yet is paraded throughout the euphemistic home of the brave while criminal dragnets are surveying Snowden. Director of the NSA, James Clapper, is too an American belligerent and adversarial constitutionalist. When questioned by Oregon Senator Ron Wyden just a few weeks back, Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? Clapper blatantly perjured by replying, Not wittingly. There are cases where they could in inadvertently, perhaps, uh, collect, but not, not wittingly. Exposing crime is not a crime. Committing crime is a crime. Snowden, quote, stole information belonging to the American public. This erroneous notion defies that Snowden, himself an entity of the American public, published a trove of documents, therefore theoretically under his possession, and refunded Americans' autonomy over the democratic model. It is of the public's pursuit to define and sanction policies and programs of the federal government. Snowden is not a vile thief. He is a valiant whistleblower. The NSA's, not Snowden's, warrantless surveillance and wiretapping amidst PRISM illegally sabotaged the metadata of and jeopardized the privacy of we the people. But if you're doing nothing wrong, why do you need to have rights? On June 22nd, the Obama administration charged an instigator of civil disobedience deliberately juxtaposed with a high school dropout, Ed Snowden, with espionage. Though handing classified information to not the American people, but the enemy is indicative of espionage. Either Obama needs a refresher course in his law at his alma mater, or perhaps this legal slip-up is merely confirmation that the U.S. government views you and me as the enemy. Reversely, the National Security Agency should be incriminated for espionage, illegally fabricating the groundwork to an Orwellian surveillance state. Elicited by Senator Dianne Gungrab and Feinstein, Snowden, if anything, should be indicted for treason, not espionage. Even so, Snowden aided his country by rekindling transparency to an establishment laden with opacity, not the inverse as the liberal media illustrates. Implying that Snowden's silence and compliance to unconstitutional ultimatums would yield no crime fosters the perils of American indifference. In an empire of lies, the truth becomes treasonous. In Liberty and Vigilance, correspondent Andrew Demeter on behalf of Press for Truth, signing off.